This summer, our series will be, will be focusing on ways students can make the most out of their internships um, on the path to full-time employment. So our speaker today is Ulyssia Dennis. Um, she is a proud two-time UIUC alum um, and is the Assistant Director of Engineering Career Services. Uh, she coaches students to discover and develop essential professional skills using a combination of her diverse experience as an HR practitioner and her street smarts. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Um, I want to thank Jenny and the team at Enterprise Works for inviting me to speak with you on a critical topic in the workplace. I hope that even as you've already started your internships at the research park, you can tell already that a good amount of what you're going to be able to accomplish depends on how well you're able to work with the people that are around you. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And if you all would do me a favor, if I could just see a few thumbs ups, if you can see the screen. All right. Thank you all so much. So the title of this presentation slash discussion is teamwork, making the dream work from anywhere. A saying that I've heard since I was a student at the U of I is teamwork makes the dream work. And I really want to um, just dive into a little bit more of what that means and how to make it practical. A couple of disclaimers. I am not a scholarly expert on the topic of teams. However, I started my academic journey at the U of I. It's hard for me to say this out loud because it doesn't feel like it, but 20 years ago, I got to campus as a freshman um, 20 years ago, and my college experience was the beginning of learning what it means to be on a team, what are the ways in which teams can work together to be effective. So I, again, cannot claim to have some form of college, um, scholarly expertise but I have a lot of life and work experience on this topic that I hope will be helpful to you. A couple of things that I also want to throw out there um, to set some clear expectations for our time together. Uh, first and foremost, in any aspect of your life and work, what you get out of an experience is what you put in. So I want to ask you um, to be engaged, to participate, as um, Jenny mentioned, I have some questions woven throughout the slides. Please do uh, take a moment to type your responses into the chat box. Hopefully at the end, we'll have enough time for um, those of you who want to ask your question out loud to unmute yourself so that we can all hear your voice and engage in the conversation together. Um, but again, please don't mentally check out, be an active part of this conversation. Um, the second thing that I want to point out is what I'm going to share with you today mostly reflects my own experiences and perspectives, and it's just a place to start. There is so much amazing information out there, um, and while I'm not a scholarly expert, there are scholarly experts who actually take um, an official research approach to the topic of teamwork. Let this experience spark your curiosity, spark your interest, and inspire and motivate you to keep reading, keep learning. I imagine that you can find a number of excellent TED Talks on YouTube and many other resources to help you to continue to grow. So let this time together be the start of what I hope uh, will be a lifelong journey of your proactive efforts to learn more about teams. And then the final thing that I want to um, say about this topic, as you all know, um, the world is a very interesting place right now, um, both in terms of the fact that we're not in person. Normally, uh, campus community members such as myself would be um, at that beautiful atrium in Enterprise Works having this conversation with you. Well, that's not the case because of COVID-19. But also, um, even here in the Champaign-Urbana community, we are seeing groups of people gather together uh, to 
assert a collective voice uh, to stand against racial and social injustice. The concept of teamwork and the foundation of teams, which in my opinion is how we see each other and how we interact with each other is more important than ever. Um, so keep that in mind also as we're going on this journey over the next 45 minutes. What we're talking about is critical um, because the world desperately needs people who know how to understand each other and who are committed to working well together. And again, we're not going to solve any of the world's problems, but hopefully uh, we'll have some conversation that'll help us all be better equipped to do our part. And it probably would help if I put this presentation in presentation mode. All right. Thumbs up, please, if you can still see the screen. Awesome. Thumbs up, please, if you can see the next slide. Okay, so I just wanna talk through how I've organized this content and the overall flow of the conversation. Um, some of you may have heard of what's called the five W's, who, what, where, when, why, and even though it doesn't start with a W, how sometimes finds its way into that framework of organizing um, information. I wanna take that same approach as it relates to teamwork. We're gonna look at the what of teamwork. What is it? The why of teamwork, why is it important? The who of teamwork, whose responsibility is it? And then ultimately the how of teamwork. I wanna also be clear in letting you know that as we go through this information, I'm approaching this from the concept of teamwork overall, and there will be some points where we'll acknowledge the nuances and how we adjust our practices of teamwork based on the fact that we're all, or the majority of us um, have been spending a lot of time working remotely. But keep in mind, if the foundation of teamwork practices and principles are, are not in place, it doesn't matter where your team is. The same principles that will make you effective in working together with others in the office are the same principles and practices that will make you effective when you're working remotely, give, it, give or take a few adjustments. Okay, so the get the gears rolling for all of us. The first chat box question that I have for you, what does the word team mean to you? Um, you can go ahead and type your answers. I am going to see how I can uh, adjust my screen to be able to see the chat box simultaneously. Um, but in case I'm not able to manage that, Annie, I'm gonna ask for a little impromptu help and if you are able to view the chat box, if you wouldn't mind um, just sharing a few of those. And actually, I figured it out. All right. So a couple of uh, comments from our team. I think that's a good way for us to think of ourselves right now. We are a team. Um, so we've got Sarah from Bayer, a unit of people working towards a common goal. Lauren from Caterpillar, a group of people working together on a common goal. Uh, Bria, a group of people working together toward a shared goal. Uh, forgive me if I don't read everybody's because you all are showing up strong, so thank you so much. Um, okay, a couple of other spins on it. Collaborative, collaboration, cooperation. Okay, here's one, um, a, a newer concept, constructive criticism that grows the team as individuals and in progress. Uh, but what you all hopefully are noticing in the chat, some of the most commonly occurring words and phrases are group of people, groups of individuals, um, working together, one that's coming up in almost all of your entries, a common goal, and that actually um, if I can, leads me to the next slide, the what. You all captured this quite nicely in the chat. A team is a group of two or more people 
who interact with and influence each other and are mutually accountable for common goals. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind and for us to think more deeply about common goals. That means that one person cannot assert their own goals exclusively. In order for teams to be a team, there has to be a sense of agreement of the goal. There has to be a unified sense of purpose, okay? Also, um, one of the pieces that I respect about the, pre the definition that you're seeing on the screen right now is the piece about interacting with, but also influencing. That denotes that, again, the team is not built on one person imposing their views, their ways on everybody else. It is the collective influencing each other, interacting with each other. Um, and another piece that sometimes doesn't come up, I did see this notion in the chat box as you all were responding, but mutual accountability. Again, I think that sometimes uh, groups of people can form themselves around the strongest personality or even um, can form their work around one person carrying the majority of the responsibility. But in order for a team to truly be a team, everybody in that group has to be equally invested. Everybody in that group has to be committed to doing their part. So defining teamwork, um, and these are my own words, teamwork is the combination of perspectives and practices that teams use to achieve common goals. And I threw in there for our unique experience of working remotely, despite their physical context. I do wanna take a moment and speak a little bit about perspectives and practices. Hopefully what you'll see as we're continuing our time together today, I don't just wanna share practices, you know, the tangible things that teams need to carry out, although that is important. I also want to ask us to evaluate our perspectives. I want to ask us to evaluate the way we think, because ultimately what we think influences and even determines what we do. So we have to have the right thought processes and the right perspectives on each other and on people in general if we wanna to get to the right practices that help us be effective as a team. All right, since you all are warmed up and actively participating, have a follow-up chat box question. What is the one word, and I do wanna ask us to keep this to one word, what is the one word that you would use to describe the best team experience that you've ever had? When you think about and I, I don't want to take for granted that everybody has had a positive team experience. I, I certainly hope that you have. Um, I certainly hope that you are now. But um, when you think about a time when you felt that you worked really well and those elements that you all pointed out about having a common goal and working together, when were times when you saw that happen and what's the word that you would use to describe it? This is good, family. Good teams do feel like a family. Inspiration, fun, passion, driven, trust, synergy, open, effective, fun. You do better work when you enjoy the people that you're working with, cohesive, motivated. Yeah, um, a good team should embody all of those traits and characteristics that you all are highlighting. So we've talked about the what of a team and it's pretty straightforward. A group of people working together toward a common goal. Well, now let's talk about why teams are important and why teamwork is important. Um, I found the following statistics from a Forbes article and I have the reference at the end of the slides if you're interested in reading that uh, journalistic entry in its entirety. But think about what this information is telling us. First and foremost, 
highly engaged teams show 21% greater profitability. So there is a bottom line argument for why it's worth it for people to invest the time and the energy in learning to cooperate and collaborate effectively. Businesses succeed, organizations succeed, families succeed when people know how to work well together. But consider the second statistic, 61% of employees are burned out. This is the, I would argue, at least to some extent, the result of teams that don't work well together. Um, as I mentioned, I'm operating from a mentality of 20 years of working with others, whether in an academic situation or in a professional situation. And in full transparency, y'all, the times when I have felt most burnt out, it wasn't necessarily because I had um, an unreasonable amount of work to accomplish. It wasn't necessarily because I felt ill-equipped to solve the problems that were presented to me. It was mostly because my relationship with the people that I was working with was strained. I have found that when I've had a lot of work to do, if I'm working with people that I work well with, we find a way to get it done and we find a way to enjoy it. I have found that if I'm stumped or I get stuck by a problem in my workplace or a problem academically, it was the team dynamic that helped me overcome. And so burnout can be the result of a number of things, but I wanna ask us to think about how many of the people who responded to the survey uh, in question here felt burnt out because they weren't properly supported or because there was some type of strain or conflict in the relationships with the people that they called their team. And then the final one, disengaged employees cost US companies $550 billion a year. Again, think about the bottom line impact. And I'm trying to be cautious here. I know that correlation doesn't equal causation and I don't have the full study for us to look at. But again, when I think about my experiences over 20 years and the past 15 years as a post-collegiate professional, most of the time when I've left a job, wasn't always about money, wasn't always about dissatisfaction with the work that I was doing. Usually it was because I realized that I was not in an environment with people with whom I could succeed, okay? When people are satisfied and happy in their work, they tend to stay. And a big part of that satisfaction comes from who you're around on a daily basis, who you're interacting with on a daily basis. Um, in general, uh, people who work in the US will work a minimum of 40 hours per week. And then in peak seasons, it can be much more than that. You all, that's a lot of time to be stuck with people that you have a hard time communicating with. That's a long time to be um, among people where there isn't that synergy. So in order for our organizations to succeed, in order for people to do their best work, we have to invest in healthy teams. So the next chat box question, I'm really curious to hear what you all have to say on this one. We talked about your best team experience. Now I wanna ask you to think about your worst team experience. What's the one word that you would describe to, what's the one word that you would use to describe that team? Let's see what we have. Frustrating, unengaged, uncommunicative, unresponsive competition, divisive, uncooperative, chaos. And notice that these words possibly describe individuals, but probably also describe larger 
issues. Sometimes you might have a, a group of people who are nice people and good people, but the structure of the team or the structure of the organization um, doesn't create an environment in, in which they can thrive. Undelicative, delegative, if you're reading it, you know the word that I'm trying to say. <laughs> Selfish, unmotivated. Those are some common ones. Now, I don't have a lot of content to answer the next W. We talked about the what of teamwork. We've talked about the why. Now we're talking about the who. This is very simple. I am not saying that the leaders in your organization don't have a responsibility to help create an environment in which everyone can thrive. At the same time, um, it's not uncommon for people to look to someone else to make a change. It's not uncommon for people to believe that it's someone else's responsibility to make a change. What I want to ask all of us as a team in this presentation to do today is make up our mind that we have something to contribute, that whether or not our teams succeed in many ways depends on us. Um, a very famous and powerful saying um, by Gandhi, hopefully some of you have heard it, is be the change that you want to see in the world. Again, other people have a role to play, and I think this is especially true for you all as interns, right? It may feel as though, well, I'm an intern, my tenure with this team is short-lived, what can I really do? Possibly a lot more than you might give yourself credit for. But imagine you all, what would a team look like in even as I mentioned, looking at the broader landscape of the world that we live in, what would our world be like if every individual human being owned a responsibility to treat others the way that they want to be treated? Now, we can't control that. However, we can say, I'm committed to doing my part. So as we shift into the conversation about how to engage in healthy teamwork. Don't necessarily think about your hiring manager. Don't necessarily think about your fellow intern. Start with yourself. And as we go piece by piece, think about how are you being an effective team member. And hopefully you can inspire and motivate others to follow suit just by the example that you're setting. Okay, another chat box question. Um, and I'll talk through this before um, you all give your responses. But thinking of yourself, thinking of your individual responsibility to be a healthy person on your team, what role do you usually play? Now, these are not mutually exclusive. And what I mean by that is, I'm not saying that you can only be one of these individuals. I'm not even saying that this list fully captures all of the ways that people help their teams. Um, but there are usually certain roles that individuals play to help the team accomplish their goals. The visionary is typically the leader, or at least the person that's helping the team um, keep their eyes on the end result that you're going after. That's the person who's also helping the team determine what the end result should be. The coordinator is the person who's tactically gifted at helping the team keep things moving. Some of the things that you'll see coordinators do will be um, activities like scheduling meetings, taking notes, sending out follow-up messages. These are the people who help facilitate the action. The encourager, this is the person who you can count on when nothing seems to be going well, they're gonna have something positive and motivating to say. When the team is struggling, the encourager is the person who gives you um, those words to inspire you to keep going. 
And then the worker, those are people who just know how to get it done. Um, those are the people who aren't looking for recognition all the time. They just do what they do and they do it well. So at this point, hit me up in the chat box and we reflect on your experiences in teams. Does one of these roles resonate, you, resonate with you as something that you typically do well? Ah, thank you. Next lab. That's cool. You all got everybody reflected. The great display of teamwork. Okay. Give people a few more minutes. I know that this might be one of those questions that it takes time to reflect on. Okay, I see a lot of workers in the chat boxes, a lot of coordinators. We've got some encouragers coming through. Okay, a lot of workers and coordinators. You know, one of the things I wanna encourage you all as interns um, to pay attention to is how these roles might evolve in your experience over the summer. Um, as you progress with your projects, are there opportunities for you to not only continue to be an outstanding worker, but are there ways in which you can take on some of the coordination responsibilities? Um, even if you're not necessarily the lead on a project, could you step into a visionary role by sharing an idea that maybe the leader hadn't yet thought about? So. Um, I want to encourage you as you're reflecting on your summer or even for those of you that will be continuing um, at the research park through the fall semester, pay attention to your journey and see how your roles evaluate, evolves over uh, the next several months. Okay, the how. So now that we've talked about what teamwork is, we've talked about why teamwork is important, We've talked about who's responsible for teamwork, and I hope you all agree that we are all individually responsible. Let's spend some time talking about the how. As I mentioned um, at the beginning, there are academic and professional scholars who study the concept of teamwork, organizational behavior, organizational development, and many of them have developed models or frameworks to help you and I understand how teams operate. One model that I really appreciate, I think it's very straightforward and easy to understand, is the Richard um, Beckhart's GRPI. In my mind, I kind of think of that as grippy model of teams, okay? Whenever you see this model represented, it will mostly show up as a pyramid, as we have here on the screen. And the GRPI is an acrostic for goals, roles, processes, and interpersonal relationships. One thing I want to point out that um, I observe with this model is in a pyramid, you have to have a solid foundation first before you can build on everything else. Think about the house or apartment building that you live in. There has to be a foundation and typically the higher up the building goes, the stronger the foundation has to be. Notice what's at the foundation of this model. Interpersonal relationships. Just as I mentioned earlier, sometimes we try to jump into practices without thinking about perspectives. With teams, sometimes we try to start at the top of the pyramid with establishing goals before we understand how much we have to invest in the relationships. Again, it's hard to imagine a team that is consistently hitting their goals if they don't have strong interpersonal relationships, okay? It starts with people, okay? And everybody's personality is different. There are those of us, um, I'm one of these individuals, I tend to be 
just naturally focused on relationships, while there are others who are more naturally focused on tasks. People like me, it doesn't mean that I don't care about the task or accomplishing something. It's just the way that my brain is wired. My first thought is going to be the impact on a relationship. And in the same way, somebody who's just naturally wired to think about tasks and accomplishing work, it doesn't mean that they don't care about individuals at all. You need both perspectives. I also want to clarify, and this will get more specific in the next couple of slides. When we talk about interpersonal relationships, this does not mean that you have to be overly emotional. This does not mean that you have to be someone who smiles every second of every day. It just means that you recognize that the quality of the relationships, how well people interact with each other is going to determine the success of your processes, your roles, and your goals, okay? So let's start breaking this down a little bit more. And again, in the spirit of individual responsibility, I have some questions for us to reflect on as we think about each plank in that pyramid. So as it relates to your interpersonal relationships at work, here are some questions to ask yourself. Do you recognize and respect your own value in the team? I start with you because another old saying that um, I think is really critical at work is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You will have a hard time truly recognizing and valuing others if you don't even recognize and value yourself. The concept of embracing everybody's skill sets, no matter what those different skill sets are will be hard to do if you don't recognize that you bring a unique set of skills. You bring a unique and valuable set of experiences and perspectives that your team needs in order to thrive. So the first relationship that you have to master is the one with yourself, okay? Now, once you have a clear sense of who you are and what you bring to the table, then you need to think about whether or not you recognize and respect the value that each colleague brings to your team. One of the uh, dangers that I've seen a lot, I am not a trained professional in STEM. My background is in business administration, human resources and project management. However, I've had the privilege of working with some brilliant technical minds. What I have noticed is, and this is just an example, not a generalization for every instance, I have noticed in my experience that sometimes a technical professional might assume that they are the only intelligent person on the team, purely because their background is maybe in science or math. Whatever your team's mix of roles and responsibilities are, you have to understand that everybody brings something valuable. And if you take away any person's contribution, your team won't be the same, okay? The next one, do you make an honest effort to understand the perspective of others? You all might recall one of the words that came up in the chat box when I asked you to describe the ineffective teams that you've worked on. Selfish was one of those roles. When we hold so tightly to our perspective and we assume that in every situation we are right, we're going to behave in a way that hurts our teams. And this is not easy. I want to be clear with you all. I'm not trying to tell you that all of this is easy. It is worth it, okay? Because you have to recognize that no one person on the team has all of the, effort, the answers. When you take time to try to see things through somebody else's perspective, 
you might discover resources and insight that will help your team thrive. And you might have missed out on those insights if you had only focused on what you thought and what you felt was the best solution. A big one, are you trustworthy and supportive? Can your team count on you to deliver your projects on time? Can your team count on you to show up to meetings on time? Can your team count on you to not say negative things about them behind their backs? When your teammates need help, do you belittle them for needing help or do you do your best to jump in to let them know that you're there to support them? A virtual bonus here. Um, and, and I have to admit, I'm guilty of this, especially when I'm not on video. When we're on Zoom calls, are you really paying attention? Are you really listening to what people have to say? I have to admit, I work with three screens on my desk and I will sometimes intentionally not put myself on video because I don't want people to see me working on something else while they're speaking. But when I do that, I miss out on something important that somebody has to say. And so I'm personally trying to do better in that area. And I want you to be honest with yourself and think about how well you're doing. Another important aspect of how we can cultivate healthy interpersonal relationships, especially when we're not in the office together, are you just checking on people? Um, there are people on your teams, depending on their family situation, who may not have seen their loved ones in a very long time in light of COVID-19. You may have some coworkers who live by themselves and when shelter in residence was really being strictly enforced, other than a video call or a phone call, they might have gone weeks and weeks without um, some personal interaction. So it's important for us to check on your people when you're not, you know, focused on a work task, just simply asking somebody, how are you doing? And then really listening to that answer can make all the difference in the world. Uh, one of the most fun experiences that I've had so far this year was working with a coworker to do uh, what we call a ding dong ditch birthday drop off. We had a, a coworker who recently had a birthday. We went and got a gift for her, met up at her home, put it on her doorstep, rang the doorbell and then ran. In hindsight, I can see how that might be slightly creepy, but we did eventually send her a text message to let her know who it was. And while we, you know, had a good sense that she would appreciate it, um, until she told us how much that meant to her, I don't think either of us really knew the impact of that action. So um, just a quick IM, just a quick email at the end of a Zoom call, check in on people, let them know that you care about them even outside of your work. I'm gonna speed up a little bit because I really wanna leave some more time for questions. But processes, some of the chats that you all put about teams that weren't effective, some of the words were things like chaotic or there wasn't delegation. It's not always that the interpersonal relationships aren't working well. Sometimes people just don't know what's going on in the team. So here are some questions, again, for you to think about with your team's processes. Are you using the appropriate channels of communication? Um, are you sending somebody an email when probably it's more effective to give them a call? Or are you sending somebody a lengthy email when all you needed to do was ask the question quickly on IM? What is your team's preferred method of communication? Um, sometimes we get frustrated when people aren't responsive, but it's because one person prefers email, somebody else prefers Slack, somebody else prefers text messages. It's important to get a, a good sense of what works for your team as a whole in terms of communication. Do you know and respect how your team makes decisions? Um, 
who's responsible for different functions and who's the ultimate decision maker. Um, a lot of mistakes get unintentionally made in the workplace because we didn't know who to ask before we did something. Um, so while hopefully it's still a little bit early in your internship, make sure you know who the decision maker is before you move forward uh, with a course of action. Also think about appropriate tools and procedures. Um, along those lines, did you receive a handbook or is there a website that your team uses to organize expectations? Y'all please read that stuff. It's not exciting, but it's important because you will be held accountable for whatever documentation you receive during your orientation process. The goal is to inform you. So if you have a team handbook and you haven't yet read it, please read it quickly because at some point the expectation is gonna be that you know what to do based on the information that was shared. Here's the virtual spin on processes. Are you still doing the right things and following the right protocols even though no one sees you? Sometimes we comply with regulations and we comply with the team's rules when we're in the office because you can't get away with stuff when people are watching you. But even now that you're working from home, are you still following the right steps that your team has put in place to make sure that your work is executed accurately and correctly? That's still important. Follow-up chat box question along those lines. What has been the biggest challenge that you and your team have faced since um, we all started working from home and having to work remotely? Um, you can even broaden that, you know, outside of your internship. Think about group, what did group work turn into for you after instruction? went online? What happened with your lab mates when everybody had to work remotely? What have been some of the things that are challenging? I'll give a few minutes because that's not necessarily a one word answer. And in the interest of time, I will move on to the next slide. But um, if you can listen and type, I would appreciate it. So going back to the how, remember in the um, Beckhart GRPI model, you had at the foundation interpersonal relationships, the P stood for processes. Now we talk about roles. One of the hardest things for teams in terms of staying on track is knowing who's responsible for what. I have seen it time and time again where nothing got done because everybody thought that someone else was supposed to do it. So here are some questions to think about as it relates to the importance of clearly defined roles in your team. Are you clear on your understanding of your role and what you're responsible for? If you're not, I wanna urge you to have a conversation with your supervisor immediately. This is gonna be critical. Um, I was sharing with Jenny and some of the other um, call attendees that I had seen snippets on Twitter from last week's workshop talking about being effective in your internship. And one of the points that I thought was brilliant was just the simple phrase of stop doing work that doesn't matter. Well, you can't do work that matters if you don't have clarity on your role. But not only for yourself, do you understand the roles of others around you and not only understand their role, but do you respect the expertise that goes along with that role? Again, a very practical example that I think about um, in my experience is sometimes the divide between technical professionals and non-technical professionals. Each group has to understand that both sets of experiences are valuable. To the next point, when you think about administrative staff, the people who are the receptionists, um, custodial staff, do you include them as valued professionals? Do you understand that without their work, 
your organization won't be as effective as it can be. Another one, in terms of leadership, we talked about decision makers. Do you respect and cooperate with your leaders? This does not mean that you have to agree with them, right? No one's perfect, no leader knows everything, but do you understand that for the most part, it may not be the case all the time, but for the most part, there's a reason why that person is in the position of leadership that they have. And are you interacting and communicating with them in a way that demonstrates your value for what they bring to the table while at the same time making your voice heard? Here's a practical question for working remotely. Given that you have a unique set of skills and experiences that benefits your team, Working from home, can people find you when they have a question about your area? Um, I know that technology doesn't always cooperate with us, but sometimes I get a little tense when I'm trying to ask a coworker a question. And in our Skype for Business IM system, I see that they've been away from their desk for four hours. And I'm like, I need you, and this is urgent. Where are you? We don't want to be that person. People need to be able to find us when they need to draw from our expertise. And then I'm going to go through this last slide, this last uh, portion about uh, goals very quickly. And I'm just going to summarize this. You must be able to connect the dots between what you're doing and your organization's overall goals. Again, I'll repeat the quote that I saw from last week's workshop. Stop doing work that doesn't matter. But the only way that you can do work that matters is if you know what matters, if you know what your organization's priorities are, both from a short-term, intermediary, and long-term perspective. The people who work best in a team is when they know what piece of the puzzle am I? And they can see how that piece contributes to the larger success of the group. Let me quickly hit the chat box and see what you all had to say about the challenges that we're going through as we work from home. Distractions, yes, 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 and yes. Communication, email and messaging just doesn't cut it. I agree. I tend to be a sensitive person a little bit I am so paranoid when I write emails now and I'm like, well, did that sound right? Did they understand what I mean? Or if I read an email or a message, I'm like, well, what did they mean by that? Are they being shady towards me? It's hard when you can't talk in person. Lost time between waiting for communication, agree. It looks like the majority of what we're highlighting are the challenges with communication and distractions. I see another one, burnout. That's real. And, and I want to tell you, it's okay. <laughs> it doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you a bad employee. If you have days where, especially like today, it's pretty gloomy out. It's just hard to get it going. It's okay. Don't be too hard on yourself. Um, but my hope is, even as we're being honest about the challenges as we work from home, um, as a result of this conversation, I'm hopeful that this has given us a, at least a few tools to make it better, not only from the perspective of working from home, but again, when you think about teamwork, the day is going to come, hopefully, when we're all back in the same building together and we can just walk around the corner to say hi. We can, you know, bump into somebody in the break room and have an actual conversation. Um, but just remember, y'all, the things that will make your team strong while you're away from the office, they're the same things that make your team strong um, when you're in the office. These aren't new principles or concepts. I just think that now we have to be all the more intentional, okay? So a final question um, that I'll throw out and I'll stop sharing in case we have maybe one or two people who want to weigh in verbally. What is your next step in helping your team collaborate more effectively, especially 
in today's virtual world. Um, after all of these workshops, y'all, please be thinking about your takeaway. What are you going to do with this information? So we'll open up the chat box as well as um, within the <laughs> few minutes that we have, if somebody wants to use the reaction to wave um, and share, is there an immediate practice that you learned that you want to use? All right, I've got one. Sial, please unmute yourself and share with us. Right, so um, something I learned from the presentation, I think, is that um, sometimes uh, we might be thinking like um, there's no trust built in the team or there's no enough communication in the team. But uh, I learned that sometimes maybe we block, block ourselves from those communications sometimes. And if we reach out, we might actually find like we can communicate very well with the team. Well, I think the team I'm currently at is very good at it, <laughs> but I did have some experience then in previous team. Oh, you mute yourself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, I really appreciate you sharing that. And that's a great point. Um, communication and, and working with the team, it requires us to be brave, y'all. We have to have some courage and, um, you'll be surprised you will really be surprised sometimes that people that you might think aren't willing to listen to you they really will listen or um problems that you think everybody knows about they might not know and they're just waiting for the one person who's going to have the courage to wave you know raise their hand and say we need to talk so thank you for making that point um i know it's 12:59 you can continue to use the chat to answer that question. I know that that might require a little bit more reflection and that's okay, but I do want to ask if we've got maybe one more person who wants to share what's your number one takeaway that you want to use with your team as a result of our conversation today. I think for me personally, I've started a couple teams over the summer or like I'm rebuilding uh, like student teams and starting new. And I think with new members as a leader, it's important to take the initiative to ask for goals and set that very baseline where everyone, you assume they join for like a common goal, but they also have their personal goals. And so um, just making those one-on-one -on -one connections um, before bringing the whole team back together and understanding everyone like more deeply. That's a good point. Thank you for sharing that and uh, being our closeout commentator for today, Annie. Well, again, it was a pleasure to be with you all. I do want to ask for uh, a favor just for me as I'm continuing to learn and grow. Can you give a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or thumbs sideways to kind of reflect? the helpfulness of this content of this uh content today thumbs up if you found it was helpful and i promise my feelings won't be hurt thumbs down if you're like meh i knew this already or a sideway thumbs if you're still thinking about it okay all right thank you all that was super helpful